بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله continue on in our series أحكام الصيام فضيلة الصيام or فوائد في صوم and all the other, the benefits and the greatness of fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned a hadith the last time which the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam discussed or he alayhi salatu wasalam informed his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een about the greatness of Ramadan or f- and fasting and that the shayateen would be chained and we'll go further into detail about that in one of our other sittings but in the second sitting we're just going to briefly describe what is fasting in Islam thus fasting in Islam first in the Arabic language it means mutlaq al-imsak which means In general, restraining. This is generally uh, restraining from, refraining from things. This is what som means in the Arabic language. But as a sharia term, or from the mustalahat, a shara, fasting, it is a ta'abud lillahi ta'ala. بإمساكي عن الأكل والشرب والجماع وسائر المفطرات مفطرات من طلوع الفجر إلى غروب الشمس. Fasting أيها الأحبة في الله in Islam. It is a ta'abud lillahi ta'ala. It is worship, seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a form of worship. It is worshiping Allah the Almighty. By refraining from eating and drinking and sexual relations and the other things which break a person's fasting from the entrance of Fajr, Tulu al Fajr, from the rising of the sun, when the sun begins to uh, appear, or, or so, when. when uh, Day, daybreak or daylight begins to appear until ghurub shams until the sun begins to set this is what fasting islamically is so again as a sharia term it is to refrain from eating and drinking and sexual relations seeking to draw nearer to Allah that's very important because a person could do those things as a part of dieting or as a part of uh some self-help practices or yoga or wh- whatever uh, the various ideologies and the various systems and beliefs and belief systems that are people are involved in they could do it for those reasons but what makes it Islamic fasting is it's ta'abud is that it is worshipping Allah ta'abud lillah that it is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you're seeking to draw nearer to Allah you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please Him by restraining from uh, refraining from uh, eating and drinking and sexual relations and the other things which break a person's fast from the beginning from sunrise until sunset what is the hukum for fasting Ramadan which I think we already know Ajma'u Muslimun ala anna sawm Ramadan ruqn min arkan al-islam Fasting is one of the pillars of Islam. And the Muslims have consensus on this. And it is one of the greatest obligations or obligatory duties that is placed upon the Muslim and that nusus for it or the evidence for it is based in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 
As for the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikitab al Kareem, Ya Yaladina Amanu, Kutuba alaykum siyam, Kama Kutuba ladina min kablakum, Lalukum tatakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Faman shahada minkum wa shahar, Falyasum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, O you who believe, addressing the believers, addressing Ahmad Iman, O you who believe, Fasting has been prescribed for you, similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would gain taqwa. So one of the reasons we fast, is in order to increase our taqwa. This fasting, when you are fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you're restraining, and you have a hungry, uh, you're, you're, you're tasting and feeling a bit of hung, <coughs> hunger and thirst, and so forth. Then this helps you to draw near. It makes you more receptive to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can begin to appreciate. And then you begin, bi'idnillah, to forget about the sinfulness that you normally engaged in. The fasting helps you. So fasting is one of the means to attain taqwa. And taqwa, ayyul ahabbati fil as we've said on countless occasions, it is... Adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refraining from those things which he has prohibited. So it is doing the righteous deeds and the ibadat and it is refraining from the muharramat. This is one of the definitions of taqwa that the salaf uh, in their various ta'rifat which strengthen one another and support one another uh, inform us that this is the definition of taqwa doing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refraining from the muharramat so fasting is a wasila it's a means to attain that taqwa kutiba alaykum siyam kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba alladheena min qablakum la'allakum tattaqun Fasting was prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you in order that you would gain taqwa. So it's a means to taqwa Allah wa jal. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ وَالشَّهَرَ فَلْيَصُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then whoever amongst you witnesses uh, this month, then fast it. So this is an emr, this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa emr yufidu wujub in the shar, uh, when whenever we have text, Islamic text from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and it is in the imperative form, the language that's being used is in the imperative form, meaning that it's a, it comes as a commandment, then the ulama they say, al emr yufidu wujub, which means whenever there's a commandment, it is evidence or it supports that something is an obligation. That this command is an obligation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kutiba alaykum siyam. Also, this love, this, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kutiba, this means, this is in, uh, in Arabic referred to as Mabni lil majhul, as far as the Arabic grammar. And this is, in English, we refer to it as the passive voice. Kutiba alaykum siyam. So we would properly translate this to say, fasting has been prescribed for you or was prescribed for you. Kutiba, instead of kataba, meaning Allah, uh, you know, mentioning the, the one who prescribed it. Instead, it's in the passive voice. Kutiba alaykum siyam. Fasting has been prescribed for you. Who's prescribed this for us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَمَا كُتِبَ لَدِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Similar to the way that those who before you were ordered and commanded to fast. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you would gain taqwa. So this is also showing that this is whenever you hear something uh, in the shara, in a hadith, or in the Qur'an, kutiba, 
or ketaba, ketaba law, or, or something similar to this, this is also evidence that that is something, when Allah has written something for you, or has uh, prescribed something, that is also one of the alfav, one of the uh, ways of uh, articulating that something is an obligation. Kutiba alaykum siyam. Fasting has been prescribed for you. So that means what? It's an obligation. Unless you find something else in the shara, in the nasus, to show that that obligation becomes, uh, takes one of the other ahkam, a khamsa, that are mentioned by the ulama, by the fuqaha. So ayala habati fillah, in that verse we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. That's dalil and evidence that fasting is an obligation for us as Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مِنْكُمْ That whoever witnesses from amongst you uh, this month, then fast it. That's also in the uh, showing that it's an obligation. We have lem al amr here. Here it shows that this is also one of the alfav in the sharia, in asul of fiqh, and from the nahu, from the Arabic language, illustrating for us that this is a commandment. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Yusun. So those are evidences from the Quran. As for the Sunnah, wa amma sunnah, fa qawluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi al-hadith mutafakun alayhi min hadith ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu buni al-islam al-khams in the hadith of ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu where he said buni al-islam al-khams sharatin la ilaha illallah wa sharu anna muhammad al-rasulullah wa Iqam is salat wa ita'i zakat wa sum Ramadan wa hajj al bayt. In the hadith of the Prophet, where it mentioned the five pillars of Islam, and one of those pillars, as every Muslim should know and be aware of, is fasting. And that's mentioned in a nas in the text, in the nas of the hadith of Ibn Umar. Also in the hadith of Jibreel, where Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam came and he came to the Prophet ﷺ and his, and his companions, and he <clears throat> had came as a, tra you know, in the image of a man with uh, excessively dark hair and excessively white garment, and he came and sat with his knees up against the Prophet ﷺ's knees or his thighs against the Prophet ﷺ's thighs. And he asked the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirani al-Islam. He said, Oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. So as if he was seeking knowledge. But in fact, he was, he, he was making this, illustrating this for, uh, for us, what the pillars of Islam and Iman and Ihsan are in this very long hadith, the hadith uh, Jibreel. And so he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirun in Islam. <coughs> oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so he addressed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Muhammad. And the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, Al-Islamu in tashadin la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Wa aqimu salat. وَتُكِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَتُتِيُّ الزَّكَاءِ وَتُصُومُ رَمَضَانِ وَتَحْجِ الْبَيْتِ إِنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلٌ So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the five pillars of Islam. He said, Islam uh, is to bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his uh, last messenger of Allah. And to establish the prayer and pay the zakat, pay the alms tax, and fast the month of Ramadan, and make the hajj if one is able to do so. And then Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam said, Sadaqt. So the Sahaba then at that time, you know, because Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam said, you've spoken rightly. So the Sahaba were amazed that he said this, and he was the one who, who questioned, as, that he knew the answer. So he was the questioner, but he already knew the answer. So this, the Sahaba thought was a strange thing. Sadaqta, 
فَعَجَبْنَا لَهُ يَسْأَلَهُ يُصَدَّقُ So we were amazed that he asked and then he testified that what he said was true. Meaning like as if he already knew this information. Like he, you know, it was a question being asked in order to make ban for the other people, to clarify for those people around. So they were amazed. And then Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam said, akhbirni an iman. And then tell me about iman. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam mentioned the six pillars of iman. Ayul ahabbati fillah, the shahid here, the purpose of mentioning this hadith is to also show that this is another text showing and illustrating from the sunnah, illustrating the obligation of fasting. And then in another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where <coughs> the hadith of Talha uh, ibn Ubaidillah, that an Arabiya jaa ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that a Bedouin came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, akhbirni madha farad Allahu alayhi min siyam. And he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, Tell me about what Allah has made an obligation upon me from fasting. And the Prophet ﷺ said, قَالْ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانْ إِلَّا أَن تَتَوَّعَ شَيْئًا He said, fasting Ramadan, except if you are doing extra uh, actions of worship, some, something extra... Uh, some worship, some extra worship. And so the Prophet ﷺ informed him about the uh, the Islamic legislation. And he said, and the man said, uh, if, if I don't do anything extra, any extra deeds, and I don't do anything less than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked of me. You know, what is, what is my state then? The Prophet ﷺ responded, he said, Aflaha in sadaq, in sadaqa. Oh, dakhla jannah in sadaqa. The Prophet ﷺ said, and there was two different awfad and different ahadith, mutafakun alayh in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, he is successful if he is speaking the truth. And in another narration, or maybe the Rawi uh, had doubt, you know, uh, in his, uh, maybe he had forgotten, so he, he mentioned, Dakhla Jannah in Sadaq. Or the Prophet wasallam said, uh, this man will enter paradise if he was truthful. Meaning that if he fasted the month of Ramadan, he did those basic pillars that the Prophet wasallam informed him of, and he did nothing more than that, but nothing less than that. He did those things, uh, you know, as uh, perfect ibadah, ibadat, fulfilling his duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he would enter paradise and he would have success. And of course, the more that you do, the more success you will have and the more forgiveness that you will have by doing more ibadat. <coughs> those hadith and those ayat that we mentioned from the Quran illustrate for us the obligation of fasting and <coughs> that <coughs> fasting is uh, prescribed for us and I think we will keep it short and concise there until the next sitting and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm nafi ruskin tayyibu amalan mutaqabbilan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us the fastest holy month of Ramadan and benefit from it and leave our sins behind and be forgiven and gain the mercy and favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to complete Ramadan and bless it to be accepted Ramadan and bless us to be have better actions than the actions that we have in preceding Ramadan وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم